Oh. You guys able to uh, view my screen? Yes, no? Uh, yes, I can see your screen. Okay, okay so... Uh, so actually, uh, we'll start uh, the wave development training uh, from the onwards. Uh, so before that, I just wanted to know you guys can talk or ping uh, the question you can ask. So any of uh, I think I am seeing Archana, Dilip, Shravya, and Vijay. Shravya, I have already uh, talked. So have you worked before on any web development uh, applications, anything on JavaScript, HTML, CSS? Uh, you can say yes or no. Anything. I mean, both are fine. Uh, just I wanted to know that so that based on that I can uh, set uh, mind training uh, things so that it will be more beneficial uh, to you. So the question is do you have, guys have already no HTML, CSS, JavaScript? Have you already worked on those? Uh, these are the just a uh, few questions. Mm -hmm. No, this is my first time. Cool. Uh, others? Yeah, work on it. Sorry, uh, sorry uh, I missed that. Okay, so most looks like uh, people are uh, new to this thing. Sravya has a knowledge on few of the technologies. Uh, Okay, so I'll just uh, set the expectation what we are. Uh, okay, Vijay also has a few things you know, Philip also know just this given and good. So, yeah, we, we are having the audience who know a bit uh, of the things from the technology, but I'm going to cover much more things apart from the normal CMLC in JavaScript uh, during our entire update development uh, training. Uh, so wave development sometimes we heard as UI development, sometimes uh, if you can say wave development, so both are basically the same. Uh, so UI, when we say it's a user interface, so generally uh, when I talk about the wave technologies, means your applications running on the browser, and those front-end uh, things which we see, like when you open gmail.com, whatever the front-end thing we see, those been developed using web technologies. Uh, so, so, so some call it as a UI technology, some call it as a web technology, front end technologies, all are the same. So, what are uh, the things which we are going to learn today? So, I'll just uh, give you the proposed introduction what I'm going to cover in the entire uh, duration of our training. And then I'll, today I'll talk what is wave, what is native application type of application, what are the tools we need, uh, what is client and what is server, and then I'll give up a very brief introduction on this human introduction of the tags. So uh, these are the topics which you are currently viewing on your screen. We are going to cover in our entire uh, duration of wave technologies learning. So that is like HTML, uh, which is a fundamental of uh, any web tech uh, application. So to develop any front end uh, UI, we need HTML, and then CSS uh, is, is for so HTML, which provides a structure uh, to our uh, UI pages. And then we'll, I'll talk about CSS. CSS is for styling, so we call it Cascade Style Sheet. Then the JavaScript. The JavaScript gives uh, interaction to the web pages or web applications and 
JavaScript. By name, it says JavaScript, but it's not exactly a scripting language. So most of the people confuse the name JavaScript. So it's a scripting language, but that's a wrong. So JavaScript is a full fledged full fledged programming language by which we can write the client side thing, we can write the server side thing, anything which uh, we can do using the other traditional languages, everything is possible in JavaScript application. Because JavaScript is not only nowadays written for front end UI things, uh, it's been written for the back end as well. Even uh, the setup box, TV, everything inside that, whatever the programming we do, that also people are now doing with JavaScript. In fact, JavaScript is popular nowadays. So JavaScript is not limited to only browser UI things. And then jQuery. So jQuery is nothing but it's a library on top of JavaScript, so which makes the programmer's life easier when you use any library. So anything which is viewable in jQuery is viewable in JavaScript as well. But jQuery does it much easier way. That way, I think jQuery is very popular JavaScript library. All people use jQuery uh, whenever they have to write something on the JavaScript. And uh, hey, uh, Dilip, uh, can you uh, put uh, yourself on mute? Uh, sorry for that. Any time, any questions, you can unmute yourself. Or LBJ as well. Thank you, Dilip. Vijay, can you please uh, do the same? In between any questions, you guys can unmute yourself. You can ask. Uh, so it's not like always at the end of the session you have to ask questions. You guys can ask questions. Okay, so. Uh, then the jQuery, uh, it's a library, then the bootstrap. The bootstrap is again a library uh, uh, for CSS. Uh, we call it framework as well. So, so whatever we can do using bootstrap, we can do using CSS as well. Uh, but the best part with bootstrap is it makes the life of a developer easy. And bootstrap is mainly people do because it provides us, you can write for mobile, desktop, everything. Let's say when we design a website, uh, that should work well on the mobile device, it should work on desktop device, it should work on tablet, iPads, everywhere, right? So to achieve that, you can achieve using vanilla CSS, but if you use Bootstrap, so we call it as a responsive design because it responds based on your device size. So to achieve that, Bootstrap helps Bootstrap is not only CSS, Bootstrap is having few JavaScript APIs as well to do few of the cool things. So this is also very widely popularly used CSS framework. And then the Ajax, so Ajax technology basically we use for client and server communication. So, so using Ajax, we can talk with the server, we can paste the data, without reloading the entire page. So that's what the Ajax technology. So when you see Facebook, right? So when you uh, write any comment, when you like it, you, you can see only that section of your page uh, gets updated apart from everything you can see. In the older days, what used to happen, any action we used to do, uh, the entire page used to get reloaded. So which gets solved using the Ajax technology. So we'll see that how we can do that. And then the Angular JS. This is the most uh, important, and most of uh, my uh, uh, training hours will go uh, in Angular JS because this is one of the most popular JavaScript framework which is out there in uh, market now. So Angular JS is there from quite, I think, three to four years, but in last two years, it's been very, very popular. 
most of the UI developers or the companies are when they when they trying to develop any uh, front end uh, development, they go for Angular JS because the reason of this is uh, Angular JS makes your coding faster because you can do everything using JavaScript, uh, plain JavaScript, HTML, CSS as well. But when you use Angular JS, Angular JS provides few of the concepts. Uh, by which it makes our application much more organized. It makes the application testable because testing is equivalently important as well as the development because you can develop but final at the end if there is a bug is there which is undetected before release then your entire development effort is zero. So it should be bug free also. So Angular just provides the tools to do your unit testing, your end to end testing. So AngularJS provides a good uh, structure to your application so that anyone can join in and within no time you can start contributing because it's, it makes your application well organized and it makes the development effort also faster because a lot of things if you do in vanilla JavaScript you have to write a lot but with AngularJS it just do uh, simply out of the box. Uh, so and so these are the things which and angular js is a very big community any problem you're facing during the development you can search over the net you'll find people uh, you can find people uh, to help you out and angular js has recently released angular 2 also so I'll talk about Angular 1 as well as Angular 2 in my uh, curriculum. Because Angular 2 has just recently released. Recently means I think it's there from uh, uh, four, five, four months before. It's it's a final version has been released, and Angular 2 is quite different than the Angular 1. Angular 2 uses TypeScript, uh, so it gives uh, your option. So it gives option of you can either develop using JavaScript or TypeScript. TypeScript is uh, basically a traditional way of writing programming because uh, if you think of other C++, Java or .NET, so that's a kind of a traditional way of programming. But JavaScript was a bit different, but it then it but it gives the luxury of TypeScript where you can write the way the C++, Java and .NET used to return like class and everything uh, and it converts it to JavaScript and run it. So Angular 2 is entirely a different thing than the Angular 1 but still people are using Angular 1 only because Angular 2 is very new. Uh, there are few migration paths how you can migrate from Angular 1 to Angular 2 but this future is Angular 2. So, so, so those things I'll cover when I talk about Angular JS and then Node.js. So Node.js when I learn Node.js is mainly from the backend programming. So, so all other things what I have talked it's all about front-end uh, technologies. Uh, so but Node.js and Node.js is uh, all about backend thing how JavaScript can use for the backend programming as well. So, so that's also interesting way of learning because we everything we know okay, front end we're doing the service call, but what happens in the backend when it re receive a service request? How it handles it? Because before uh, we have only think okay JavaScript use for client side, JavaScript use for client side, but that's not the reality now with the Node JS with the uh, library of Express chairs, we can write a backend programming as well using JavaScript. So because of that, what happens now? You, we don't have to learn two different programming language to implement our entire project because our application cannot be completed without backend because there has to be a front end, there has to be a backend. So sometimes people used to write backend in Java, the .NET, PHP, uh, those things, but. But again, you have to learn a new language. But if you know JavaScript, you can write the front end as well. You can write the back end as well using the power of Node.js. 
And with Node.js, there are so many libraries also available. If you have to do automation, you want to run your test automatically, you want to generate your reports, you will have a lot of Node.js projects or the libraries are available. So using NPM, I'm not sure if you have heard of NPM is a Node package manager. You can install those uh, plugins, or sorry, install those packages and you can use these things uh, like you want to do automation, you want to deploy your application automatically so many things are there node chase is very vast and then i'll talk about html5 and css3 uh, and this is uh, just a latest version of html and css and html5 is not only about uh, html tags html5 is having javascript apis as well to do a lot of cool things like geolocation which is related to the map uh, the map which we see right the, the, the the location, the, the path of uh, travel, the distance, everything goes, uh, the playing audio and video file using HTML5 because before uh, to play audio and video file we used to uh, depend on the plugins. So you might have remembered in older days when we uh, were running any video file it asked you, you, you want to install Adobe Flash Player to run any videos, so those things are gone. Now none of the browser ask us to install the plugin to play any video file and audio file because that's inbuilt in browser now, and that's happening because of HTML5. And a lot of uh, like drawing, the canvas, the animations, whatever the animations you see, like when you see a game, right? Let's say if I give an example of car racing game, you see a lot of animations. Car is going, uh, the road is there, the building is there. Everything can be playable using JavaScript. And because of HTML5 and CSS3, they support this SVG that is scalable vector graphic. I'll talk about that as well. So, and Canvas, which helps us to draw things on browser. So, these are the new things which is there in HTML5 and CSS3. And finally, I'll talk about Git as well. So, Git is all about uh, what you can say uh, the repository things because you can write code, uh, but you have to know how you can how you can use the repository to store it because if, if you write code you have to somewhere you have to store it right and in, a, in, in one application multiple people works multiple people works for a different module you can use the module of other guys so those are all collaborations how you can uh, put your code into the repository how you can uh, clone them and, and everything nowadays happens in the group. If you see Angular, JS, jQuery, Bootstrap, everyone has their code in Git because they are open source. So all the companies are now uh, going Git when they do open source. Even if your application is not open source, Git has their enterprise version, which only can be used by your company audience. So let's say if you're working on a company which is having some thousand employees. So you can have your enterprise version of Git which you thousand people can only access it. Let's say in a project 20 guys are working on 20 guys can uh, contribute to that Git repository. So how you can do those things. So that I'll talk about when I talk about Git. So these are the basically few things I'll cover. So I think Sravya has asked about the ReactJS. Yes, ReactJS also uh, one of the JavaScript uh, framework which uh, got popular recently because of its performance because the React JS claim they perform better than the Angular JS uh, when it comes to a uh, larger DOM, DOM manipulation. The DOM manipulation means uh, in your HTML if you have to do any manipulation we call it as a DOM manipulation. The full form of DOM is document object model. So in HTML everything uh, structured in a DOM and you have to manipulate when you have to manipulate it the ActJS claims they are faster than the AngularJS I'm not sure how faster they are comparing to Angular 2 but obviously ReactJS was faster uh, when you use DOM manipulation compared to Angular 1 so if people are interested on that I can take session at the end uh, on ReactJS also so that's all about which I'll cover and believe me if you guys are aware of these many things like HTML, CSS, JavaScript which is a core of everything. So you have to know HTML, CSS, JavaScript to be a web developer or to be a front-end developer or to be a UI developer. So 
these are the fundamental basic blocks which you need and after that if you need if you know jquery bootstrap and angular js node js stable type css react and means means you 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 can be uh, an expert in web development because these are the core technologies uh, which most of the companies uses and if also some new framework comes up or some companies working on some other framework like uh, there are so many other frameworks also they like the knockout JS, backbone JS. Believe me, if you know this, you can just with few learnings you can work on any other framework. So that's all about what we are going to learn throughout. And then I'll just start uh, today's uh, things, uh, the basic. Uh, so, uh, so what is web application? So first question is that because we're going to learn web application web development so what is web application so anything we see run on browser we can safely say those are web applications so like gmail.com yes it's a web application google.com it's a web application facebook.com it's a web application so everything which runs on browser is a web application okay and then there are applications which runs on a mobile as well without browser right like if you see our whatsapp or facebook applications or many more any uh, ticket booking application uh, any travel travel websites uh, applications so many applications we see on our mobile right those are mobile applications so those could be either hybrid application or native application now question will be what is hybrid application and what is native application. First I'll talk what is native application. So native application is something which has been developed using a native technology of that device. So what does that mean? So let's say we are having iPhone or we are having Android phones. So if you want to write any application which has to run on iPhone, you have to write on Objective-C or Swift. So these are the two languages which iPhone can understand. And if you have to write the same application on Android device, then you have to write on Java because Android device can understand only Java. Same if you have to write on any uh, Windows devices, right? So you have to write on .NET, but C sharp because Windows devices can understand that language. So different devices understand different languages and if an application developed using the native language we call it as a native app. Then what is the hybrid app? So hybrid app is a mix of native technologies as well as your web technologies. So using your web technology knowledge you can develop an application like Facebook or WhatsApp or Instagram anything. So by seeing the application you cannot differentiate whether it's a hybrid app or a native app, because by seeing the application of Instagram, you cannot say it's a hybrid app or native app, because both will look exactly same, both will perform almost same, uh, depend on how critical the application is, both will depend uh, run the same. So hybrid app means you can develop, you can write everything using your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript knowledge and then you can wrap it around your native runner and then you can run your application. So that's called hybrid application. So there are a few of the uh, uh, frameworks are there which helps us to convert your uh, web knowledge, whatever you have learned, uh, like all the buttons, everything you can uh, to using your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Then there is a something called Cordova is there, which is very popularly used for hybrid applications. So what that Cordova is that that package your application, I mean those your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and makes it a kind of native application which you can run on your mobile devices. But that's not purely written using Java or Swift or .NET. You have run that using your same learning which you have done HTML, CSS, JavaScript. 
and same everything you can use angular js jquery react everything you can use but you can bundle with cordova then you can run it on your uh, on mobile devices there is something called ionic is there ionic framework i'm not sure if you guys heard of it so ionic also does the same it helps us to run your hybrid application on mobile devices ionic also nowadays become popular because it uses angular js as a uh, framework inside that it uses Cordova also and so it has angular it has Cordova and plus it has there a few of its own thing which makes uh, your development easier uh, to develop any uh, mobile applications so that's ionic so those are called hybrid applications so that's the difference between your hybrid app versus native app so the beauty of uh, Web technology is there. If you know web technologies, you can. And that hybrid app is the best part is you can. You don't have to write uh, differently for uh, different platforms. Platform means for iOS or Android, you don't have to write it twice. You write your code once. Just build your application using Cordova or Ionic, and it gives you separate package for your iOS, separate package for Android. Just take it and install it both where it will work the same way but if you go with native you have to write the same application in java once same application in swift once same application in dotnet once so thrice the development effort is thrice and you need three different developer or a same developer should have three different technologies knowledge and if you build a hybrid app you know html css javascript because you are a web application developer you write application for browser you can write application for mobile also because the same thing used in hybrid app so that's all about what we take applications where all are web things are used okay so apart from this this javascript used on a uh, nowadays people are using on remote uh, i mean in all the hardware devices like tv uh, the fridge washing machine wherever you think the code could be something everywhere now JavaScript being used as a language as well so it's not only limited to uh, applications running in browser so JavaScript can be used anywhere nowadays if you TV if you see a lot of options are there when you this that everything can be done using your JavaScript as well like people have also tried JavaScript <coughs> in robots also so that I mean I'm trying to say internet of things so any internet of things whatever you find you can find JavaScript is there okay so what are the things we need uh, to uh, learn so these are the few uh, developer tool tips which I wanted to say what are the thing we need yeah. so to learn web technologies we need browser so your a machine should have any of the browser chrome firefox whatever you like in my entire training i'll be using chrome because i'm more comfortable with chrome but if you guys are comfortable with firefox you can use firefox also safari also if you are on mac internet explorer also but chrome and firefox are better compared to internet explorer and safari uh, they have better options uh, for the debunking and everything so you can use either chrome and firefox and then what all code editor uh, you need so you can download any of code editor your choice these are the few popular code editors which I am putting over here that's like sublime text bracket VS code VS code is from Microsoft that's Visual Studio code and atom so these are the few things you can download these are free you can just search over the name you can download it you can install on your machine and you can use those as your code editor People do with normal text pad also, but yeah, that's the old way of doing things. Uh, these code editors has few inbuilt features also, which will help you while developing your application, or it will help you while writing your code. Okay, uh, so there are uh, so these are the two things you need, but there are few online code editors also happening. So if you don't want to install anything anywhere, there are two multiple are there like Plunker, CodePen. Uh, these are the things are there which is a kind of online editor so where you can write it and it will render automatically 
and we can use it. So I'll just show you how this Blankfire and Codator looks. So for Plunker, you can just open the Plunker.co, plnkr.co. And the interesting thing is this Plunker itself has been developed using Angular. You can see launch the editor. You can see this uh, left side, that is editor is an in extreme left side, the file names are there in HTML file, JavaScript file, CSS file, these are the three main files you need for any web application. And here uh, you can see your editor window, you can switch between files. And here you can see there is a small I button is there. You can open that I button. You can see hello Blunker is coming, so this is your output. So this is a code you've written. This is how it will look on a browser, the view. And these are the three files which you need. So currently the JavaScript CSS files are empty. I've not written them. By default, there is nothing is there. So only simple plain HTML file is there. It's just printing hello Blunker. So if you change anything, let's say if I'll say hello web, you can see it will reflect over here. Because it auto refresh. If you want, you can stop auto refresh. Also, there are a few settings and everything. And the one best part is you can sign in with GitHub. You can see there is an option here, sign in with GitHub. And what you can do, you can write any code, and you want to save it for later reference. Uh, you can just click on save button. It will save for you. And tomorrow, if you want to again add something there, you can add it. And if you want to share with someone, let's say you just write some demo and you want to share with someone just to review it. You can just share the link, uh, he can be able to see uh, that here. You can see I just now saved this and if I uh, ping you guys, you can open it for on your thing and you can be able to see the same hello web. So this is how you can uh, share uh, the link uh, with uh, saving any of your plunker work. So that's a thing. So same thing the code pane wants to do. So if you want to use your code pane also, you can use code pane as well. Like this, there are some other uh, online editors are uh, there. So this helps us when during learning phase. So let's say you just want to prototype something before actually implementing in your project. Then you can come here, you can prototype it, you can see how it works. If you are okay, you can put it in your code. And if you still feel you need some review from some guy, he can suggest you to better way of doing it. Uh, you can just ping him this uh, URL, he can uh, review your code, he can update it, uh, then you can say, oh, okay, you are missing that part, and now go ahead and do it. So this is how the uh, we generally work and day to day thing, because uh, people doesn't know everything, so it's always better, better to uh, get your feedback on it, how you've written, which helps. Okay, so this is how this uh, Plunker and Code can helps. Uh, there are a few options as well. So if you want to uh, add any library, let's say you want to add AngularJS library, a Bootstrap library, jQuery library, you can just uh, click what the version you want to add. So let's say, uh, and here the mode is there. Uh, let's say we are developing, uh, I want to use 1.6.0, which is a latest version of Angular 1. I can just click here, I just add it. And you can see it's got added over here, the AngularJS file. And now I can use the Angular features in my application. So you can see how uh, useful it is for any prototyping. Obviously, you will not write your actual production thing here entirely. Uh, but yeah, it helps for prototyping or for training purpose or for uh, demonstrating purpose. These are Okay, so that's about our online uh, code uh, things. And for offline uh, code editor, let's say I'm having Visual Studio, I'll just show you by how the Visual Studio code looks. Just give me a moment.
Uh, this is how your Visual Studio uh, things looks. So you can see uh, these are the files over here. There, there are a lot of options are over there. You can say file, open, you can open any project. You can write it over here. Then you can open it on the browser, the Chrome browser, or Firefox browser, whatever you have. And you can see how your code looks on the browser. So for actual development, we use uh, this uh, offline code editors. Then we do all the development environment setup uh, to run the application on browser. And uh, there are so many environment setup you can do. Like you can uh, whenever you save it, you can uh, run it as a. It will auto reload on your browser. So these are all the things uh, the development setup you can do. Any version changes happen to any of the framework, then you just run a command. It will just download your latest version. So many things are there. So we are going to do that. So we have just started now. So this is how your offline code editor looks. And then I'll talk about a few more things on the browser uh, developer tools, which uh, it will help you guys. So let's say this. So when you uh, say right click and inspect, if you click on that. It opens a developer tool over here. You can see at the bottom it opens a developer tool of the browser. You can see that. And this is how your entire HTML comes over here. So let's say this code pen, I'm a code pen developer and I want to see where my bar head. So you can see when I'm highlighting main header, it gives me uh, this main header and it's highlighting. And I and you can see this is how the logo is H1. This is how you can debug and that. You can see. And if you want to uh, check something, how it looks, okay. I go to the map, okay, UI style. This is the list, okay. The pens. I don't want to write it pen. I want to write it as a pencil. You can write it over your pencil. You can see it reflects as a pencil. And this is only will reflect to me. Uh, if you guys open same code pen, it will not reflect to you. So this is how we debug. Let's say I want okay pen takes this much. Space. Let's I'll write pencil. Okay, this will take this much page. But it looks good once so you, this is how you can debug and you can now go ahead and reflect in your application let's say i i think the pencil color i don't like it has to be blue so how it looks when i say blue so i'll just say color blue and you can see now pencils is coming as a blue okay blue is not looking good so i'll just select okay i want red ah yeah red pencil looks good in red also what kind of red i need uh, Okay, a bit like pink is red. Yeah, I'm liking it. So this is what the like, X is there, uh, which is giving me this pencil uh, looks like this. So I'll just copy this, and now the same code I'll reflect in my actual code. Like after this, I'll just copy this guy, and I'll open my uh, uh, code. Uh, let's say my uh, editor. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll say okay, this color I'm liking it. Okay, so I'll go over there and I'll put this color here. Okay, good, and I'll save this guy. And this is how we debug uh, things. That's what I'm saying. How this Chrome debugging tool helps you to do things. You can see how I changed uh, this pencil to pen and the color, everything. But this is only will reflect to me, not to other guys, because I'm just changing the code what has been loaded over here. So you can think of that way also. When I hit code pen dot io. So it must have hit some of the server, which is there. Uh, some places you don't know where the server is, and what it says, it returns it. It returns back to this browser. There's some HTML file, some JavaScript file, some CSS file, some images, some forms. So these are the things that server sends back. So that this browser can load it. So if you go to the net network tab. Uh, currently, we're not seeing anything. So, if I refresh this guy, you can see some call is happening over here, and you can see a lot of things has come up. So, if you go to the network tab, that's a bit fast. You can see all the code. So, when I hit this guy, you can see what it returns. So, this is where you can check what all the backend calls are happening. I mean, what all the calls are going from my browser to uh, some backend service, and it's returning some data. And after the data comes, some pages getting loaded. So you can see when I hit this, this is where it and in the response it returns a HTML file. You can see that. And this is the same HTML which I was being here in the elements tab. And then you can see there are some other, one more call has happened, and then it, it's using some Google font API to show some of the fonts. 
and in response it scales some CSS file. You can see this is a CSS file. Like this, some JavaScript file also comes up, analytics.js. You can see analytics.js file, some images. You can see these are the images which has been used. So this is a code bin a logo, I guess, yes. And some other JavaScript files. You can see it's asking for some JavaScript file and the JavaScript file also has came up. So a lot of things has came up, you can see, which these are there in my browser now. I can change it and I can view it how it looks. So this is how a web application works. When you hit a URL, let's say codepaint.io, it hits some server and that server returns JavaScript file. The first, the first returns the HTML file, then browser reads that HTML file and based on that HTML file, it gets to know, okay, I need few images, I need few fonts, I need few JavaScript files then again those calls happen to the server and server return those files also and finally the new page gets loaded. This entire website gets loaded. That's how your web application works. And these are the files which we are going to write when we say we are talking about web technologies. So these are the files, the HTML file, the CSS file, the JavaScript file, where I have to use, which font, and what framework I'll use. The JavaScript framework, the bootstrap framework, everything that's going to be able to write it. And same way we'll develop our application, we'll put it on some server and when you hit that URL, you can see whatever you have written that will load in a browser and your application works. So that's how the application works in a very layman form. Okay, so this is about network and when you go to the source, you can see all the source which has been get loaded. You can see there are a lot of sources come up. So everything uh, you can view, view what are the sources came up. So the source, so you source and this console shows me all the consoles which helps us to uh, debug the things. So so this is a console window and here let's say during a development phase uh, you are not sure where your code is flowing, which block it's gets executed. So you can put some log over there and that log will get printed over here and that gives you a satisfaction, okay, my code is going to the desired block where I want it. Or if it doesn't print then you'll get to know, okay, my code is not going to the desired block where it want. Looks like some issue is there in my code, go ahead and modify and run it again and see whether uh, whatever you want it's happening or not. So this is where your console helps. Apart from that one more thing what console can do or you want to read let's say from a backend server some data is coming and you want to read that entire data how it looks then you can console log that data and you can put it in a log and that log will come over here and you can see the data how the data is coming. So these are the changes, these are the things which is helpful in console. And apart from this, all the JavaScript operations you can do in console log. Let's say I can really say that equal to five, right? And I can say, and then I'll say that b equal to 10. And I can hear the a plus b, oops, I write q. a plus b, you can see now 15. So you can do your JavaScript operations over here. So sometimes in JavaScript we confuse, okay, if I write this code, how it will happen, what will happen, then you can do it, how the browser will work, then you can go, come to the console log, you write it that, and you can see, oh, okay, it works in that way, okay, let me implement it. So that way also your console helps. So you can just prototype some logic over here, and you can see how you are, how that logic will work before implementing your actual code. So there also your console log works for all the JavaScript execution you can do. So we learn element and so on through network. And there are two things, these are advanced things like performance, how you can tune your performance of the application, how you can tune the memory consumption of your application, how you can monitor which thing is taking more memory. These all things uh, are there. It's a bit, bit advanced stuff, but most of the time we use this for the elements, console, source, and you can put a breakpoint, you can analyze everything, when something goes wrong, everything is possible using this debuggers. And these are the helpful when you develop any application. So when during the development phase, 
you might see our console is always open i mean our debugging tool is always open because of we want to monitor what is happening and this is the best place to monitor what is happening okay so that's all about a uh, few other things which we should know before even writing uh, code then the client and server how it works just a pictorial representation so you open this uh, codepen.io or google.com or gmail.com anything so you can either open on a mobile or a, or a desktop or a laptop you are connected with internet then these are nothing but your client right? so your client is running over here on a mobile and somewhere in the server server is actually again some computer but it's higher configuration where your code is so the client talks with server and the server understand that request then it sends back to the response and again this clients load that page and I show you in the network tab right how many uh, requests have been went to server and what all the data we have received I'll talk more details of those things the networking how to check everything uh, in my coming classes but this is how the high level things works Things that run on client side is HTML JavaScript and CSS. Things that run on the server side is PHP, MySQL, C++, Java, and JavaScript as well. So these are the things which runs on the server side, and mainly the HTML JavaScript and CSS which runs on the client side. And whatever I have, I was talking the same thing I've written over here. When any URL has been hit on browser, it creates an HTTP request and sent to the server. Server send back the required files like JavaScript file, HTML file, images, CSS, data, uh, fonts, everything back. And then browser understand them because browser has the capability to read your HTML file, to read your JavaScript file, to understand the image file, to understand those font files because the browser is having some engine, your JavaScript engine, which decodes things, understand, and then render it. So if server returns 404, sometimes we see right some URL we hit that it says uh, it's a, it's an invalid URL. So that means 404. So in a in a uh, web world we say 404 means requested resources are not available. Means if you're type, typing hello google.com, if there is no website called hello google.com, you will not get it anything. Means you're getting 404 from the server. So server sends 404. So send 404 means whatever the client is requesting to the server is not available. That means server will return you an error code called 404. If it returns 200, it's success. So if anything, the client is asking to server, and if server returns that data, it returns the status as 200. That means success. And 500 means your resource, whatever you will ask, it's there, but there are some issue in the server side because of that it could not process that request that means 500 so these are the three main error codes used in your client and server talk apart from that also there are a few other error codes which we'll get to know in our future coming sessions then i'll talk a brief on few things on the html side Okay, you guys have any questions in between any time you guys can feel free to ask. So what is HTML? So HTML, uh, the full form says hypertext markup language. So just to talk about few lines on history of HTML. HTML when it developed or used to create documents that is rendered on browser and shared across internet. That was the main intention of creating the HTML. So the main intention of development of HTML was to create some document which can be rendered on browser. At that time only uh, legacy browsers were there and Internet Explorer were the main player and which can be shared. So that was the main intention when HTML came up. It is the content of web page which provides the page layout. HTML is nothing but it's the web page uh, it gives you some layout how your document should look like 
and HTML is doesn't talk about styles. Style comes from CSS. HTML just provides the skeleton. So this is the layman of understanding what HTML does. It just provides a skeleton to your document or the page. All the styling you see that comes from CSS. And there are a few default styles are there in browser inbuilt. If you say button, the browser inbuilt is there, the button will look like this. And in different browsers it varies a little, but if you want to have constant, we have to use CSS. Otherwise, your same button can look a bit different in Chrome, a different in uh, Firefox, a different in Internet Explorer. So HTML is nothing but few tags are there, which we call as elements. And HTML is made, made of those tags only. So in HTML, everything is tags. Uh, it can have parent tag, child tag, grandchild tag, grandparent, so on. So it's just a tree of tags. There will be a parent tag, inside that there will be two children tags. Again inside that there will be more tags. That's how HTML works. And you guys must have seen that. HTML has created to share text, data, images, everything linked together. And that's what the intention of HTML. So this is how the sample of HTML, how it looks, right? If I, so here I have not written any of the HTML elements. But if I have to explain anyone, let's say uh, a guy who doesn't know HTML and ask how HTML looks like, so this is how. Let's say your car. The car is a parent, right? Inside car, you are having engine, you are having stereo, but both are a different type. Engine comes in a different type, and stereo is for a different purpose. So with purpose, they have been different tags. So all tags has its own purpose in HTML as well. Same in car, engine has its own purpose, stereo is in purpose. So, so that's how it's a car is a parent. Inside there are two shells. There are so many shells. I'm here explaining the two shells. One is engine, one is stereo. Again in inside the engine there are different different functions are there. One is transmission, one is radiator, right? Radiator does its own job. Transmission does its own job. But these are again comes inside engine only. Same in stereo, there is CD player which does its own job. There is FM radio which does its own job. But again both comes in stereo. That's how our actual HTML has been designed. So your HTML is parent. Inside that all individual element has its own purpose. And few individual elements can reside in few other HTML elements. So, so those are can be child of some parent. So this is how this is how the HTML has been designed. The same way how this example talks about the car is parent, engine is child, transmission is car child, and this is how the tree goes. Inside transmission, there could be two more different functionalities that could be two different tags. Okay, so what are the popular or the most used tags are there in HTML? One is first is HTML, right? The tag itself name is HTML, which holds our entire document. And HTML, okay, these tags are not case sensitive. You can write it in caps letter, you can write it in small letter, you can write it in mix also. No harms. X. So these are not case cases. You write caps HTML or small HTML, both are same. So then there are two uh, child is there, one is head, one is body. So all the metadata means which we don't have to display it, but there are some functionality of those, but we don't have to render it. So those, we call it as a metadata because that is not going to render, that's not going to display it on your browser. So those things goes into head, the head element. And anything, any content which we have to display, that goes into a body tag. So that's a, HTML is our parent. They have two child, one is head and body. Anything which will not get displayed will go to head. Anything which will display will go to a body tag. That's pretty clear. And then inside that body tag, there could be so many other elements. So to 
show the header, we use h1, h2, till h6. The difference between h1 to h6 is the size of the header. h1 looks big, h6 looks small. P for paragraph and everything we write in HTML, it has to uh, enclosed around this greater than, lesser than, less than or greater than those symbols. So all the elements which is there in HTML will be like this. So it starts with this symbols and now ends with opposite symbols. Right? And the B starts from paragraph. Divs, div is are mainly a container which just contain any tags. So you can inside div you can have anything. So these are not, nothing but a logical separation in your code. Generally if you see a display wise div doesn't make any difference to a display of your element. It's just a logical separation in your code. You write div or you don't write div, your display will look same. When I say display means when you render it on browser, it will look same with div or without div. Div is just a logical container to group a certain functionality and span is same it's just a container which can contain a simple text and again span is also a logical container it doesn't make any difference by default on your display until unless you apply some CSS group to that okay and there is something called UL for unordered list, OL for ordered list, and LI are individual elements of this list. Okay, there is one thing which is very confusing in HTML world was talk type. What this talk type does? So uh, currently, with the latest browser, the talk type doesn't make much difference because when I say this last line, how is it written? That's the not symbol and the doc type HTML. If you write like this, means you are saying you use the latest version of your HTML or whatever the latest version of your browser is there, that will be used as a standard. So before HTML was having different version, when HTML1 was there, XHTML was there. So at that time, we have to specifically say to the browser, Hey browser, I have written my HTML based on this standard. So you don't error around those. So that's when the doc type was being used. So declaration of standard of compliance means which HTML standard page is following. So, so using doc type, we are explicitly saying to the browser, I have used this standard. So that's that's why you if you have seeing the older doc site should used to be very lengthy, very big because we, we are saying there the standards which we have used to write our HTML page which are used so that browser will follow those standards when it's reading the HTML page. But nowadays uh, those are not required. You just have to add this line and what it does, it says whatever the latest HTML is supported by that browser, I'm following that standard. That's all. So this is what the talk type does. And then there are a few uh, inline tags are there. Okay, so there are a basic difference between tags. One we call as a block element, one we call as inline element. And what the difference between block element and inline element in HTML? The block element by default gives a next line. By default, it enters a next line in your code. But inline element doesn't do that. That's the difference between your block element and inline. So all these elements, what we have learned here, like H1, P, div, this gives you not span. Span is inline element. You will, these are block elements. Means once it automatically enters a new line in your HTML page when it displays, but inline element doesn't do that. So that's the difference between block and inline element. We'll see that in our uh, 
application. And then uh, we have some inline elements like EM, strong, span, is an inline element. EM, just say this is, so it emphasizes. So it say, so if you have to, let's say you're writing a paragraph and inside that you have to emphasize something so that who is reading, he can notice that and we use it using EM. And when you say strong, so if you want to put some text in bold, you can use strong. And span is just a logical separation of some text. And D and P are block elements, that's I have already explained. So you EM generally you make your text italics and strong generally make the text bold. Okay, so we'll just see a code sample. Uh, how our HTML uh, looks like when we use these things. So this is a simple HTML page which I have written. You can see over there. We'll start with HTML and ends with HTML. And, and you can see when it ends, it ends with slash. So this is the ending of the HTML element. This is the start of the HTML element. You see, there's a slight difference between two. There is just a for backward sorry the forward slash is there and same your head is starting here and here so anything which goes in a head will not display these are just metadata so you can specify the title if you specify the title what it does this title actually helps to show you this you can see in this tab I'm seeing code pin front end developer uh, playground and code editor in the browser so this comes from the title Okay, and then this is just a link. So if any additional file you want to load it to support your HTML file, any JavaScript, any CSS file, any image file, we can give a path over here. And then comes the body and all other elements which helps to display some view goes inside this body tag. Okay, so if I just copy this guy. And okay, in Plunker you can download the code also. So anything you write, you can see there is a download button uh, over here. You can see uh, which downloads your code. Okay, you can see I just copied that, and if I render it. taking some time to rent now. Okay, you can see how it looks. Yeah. So this div and I told these are the block elements, right? So that's why you can see after H1 I'm I'm getting some line break and then my P is coming. P is, and these are I have not used any CSS file. You can see my CSS file is blank. Nothing is there. I'm just loading that file but this file doesn't have any rules. And whatever the styles you are seeing, these are the default Chrome style to handle these uh, elements. So when I use H1, you can see it comes in a black, bold, big. So that's a default browser style. I have not applied any style. This is a paragraph. You can see the span is there. But if I keep span or remove span, it doesn't make any difference to my code. It looks the same. You can see it's will reload again when you do any change you can see it looks the same because this is just a logical separation and what's the benefit of logical separation let's say I want to apply some style to this technologies I want this to uh, look uh, green color blue color well, let's say that's a requirement then I can just style this element and it will look different so that will learn when we learn CSS and these divs are just logical separation. If I'll remove this div also, this page will look the same, exactly the same. And then why we need div, that will understand when we have to style it. Because based on your functionality, we have to give a logical separation so that your code will be more readable. And when you have to style that particular section, you can style it that div. Let's say this div I want in yellow color, this section I want in blue color, this section I want in green color, then I can style it, right? So that's, that's why it's very important when you write HTML, you use those divs 
to give a logical separation to your functionality because if you see this is a functionality where I just say a header and I give a paragraph then there is one more functionality which says what are the technologies required to, for the web and then is that there is one more uh, uh, functionality which shows what is my favorite JavaScript frameworks right so this is how I have given a logical separation and here I have used h1 and next I have used h2 so it looks a bit smaller from h1 and here I have just used unordered list I have used ul and here ul closing bracket is there and inside that allies are there allies means individual statements and the third div I am just saying uh, my favorite JavaScript framework and you can see I have used it here because I want to emphasize on that JavaScript. You can see the JavaScript is coming in well tilted, the italic way. So that's why I have put emphasis on that JavaScript using the M. And I'm using here ordered list, that's why you can see the numbers are coming one, two, three. And Angular JS I want to highlight it so that I that's why I've used strong. So you can see it makes it a bit bold. So it's coming as a different from jQuery and React. So this is a plain, simple, HTML, very basic, which I have taught. Obviously, my coming classes will not be all basic, but I thought just to start with, it's better than we go with basics, and then we can learn advanced things, because without basics, we can't learn advanced things. So this is a very basic HTML things, what we have learned. Uh, this is how our HTML groups, and how browser uh, reads it. Browser reads from first line to last line, so that's how it reads one by one. The browser, when it renders this HTML, uh, it reads this from first to last. Then it creates something called document object model, which we call sort is DOM. And what the document object model is behind the scene, it converts it to a tree kind of structure. So in the tree, your parent will be HTML. Inside that, there will be two branches. One is head, one is body. Again, inside that head, there will be two branches. One is link, one is title. And inside body, there will be three branches. Why three? The first div is one branch. The second div is another branch. Third div is third branch. And in the first branch of div, again, there will be two branches. One is H1 and H2. And why HTML does that? Because of that branching, that DOM structure, it helps HTML to go to that particular element means traverse to that particular HTML faster. Let's say simply I'll say this S2 I just wanted to style it a red color. Right? If I say that using CSS that it can traverse that S2 using that DOM tree structure on. That's why behind the scene browser reads the HTML file and converts it to JavaScript. When we learn JavaScript Using JavaScript, you can change your HTML things, right? Instead of AngularJS, I can write it on the Angular. That, let's say a, a button will be there. When I click on button, this AngularJS will go to last, React will come to fast. And how that happens? So that happens because I can, re, I can traverse through that DOM what the HTML has been created using JavaScript. Now this is plain static page, but when JavaScript will come, it will have a crash because we don't see the web application as static. You can see this code plain; it's it's not static, right? When I click something, something happens. So that's you can see when I highlight it, the color is getting changed, and everything this is happening using JavaScript. And how it's happening? Big and so JavaScript can traverse through that DOM tree. What HTML is created to do this all magic. That's how. That's why HTML convert this everything into a DOM structure so that we can traverse to each element, whatever the nested label it is. Because it can have this very nested, ten label, fifteen label, twenty label nested structure. So that structure I can traverse. So that's what the DOM. Is. So this is what about normal HTML things. Okay, with this, uh, that's end our today's session.
and each of the end of the session I'll give you guys an exercise as well and I expect you guys to do those exercise on your free time and you can send it back to my team who is communicating with you they will send back to me or if you have any doubt anything while solving the exercises you can come back to me obviously today's exercise you will feel it's very easy because I have just talked about the basics so I want you guys to create a new page what like I what I have created that will have a title create an unordered list of cities of US create an ordered list of your favorite cities and give each list a title and highlight the visited cities with code pretty simple HTML file obviously who has already worked this HTML JavaScript it will be a five minute job for them but yeah that's how my title is because this is for all and who are the newbies I think uh, after this session it will help them to develop this page and obviously in my coming sessions the exercises will not be this much simpler but it's always good to start something with simple so with this I'll okay and you guys will get the recorded session of every day and you guys get the exercise and the code whatever I'm going to uh, use in my session at the end of the session every day my team will send you those and yes every time any questions you guys can ask because that's the end of our today's session tomorrow we'll learn a few more things on HTML and then we'll jump to CSS and once we finish CSS we'll jump to JavaScript and, and during this course I'll be developing the actual uh, close to the real applications also so that it will help you guys to understand how we develop the real applications because everything we develop it starts from normal files as well because if you start writing something from the scratch obviously you will first write those HTML tags also the HTML starting point, HTML endpoint so be it any complex application be it any easy application it starts with that HTML opening and closing tag on okay with this that's end of my session any questions you guys can ask if no questions thank you guys for joining today's session I'll see you on my next session Any questions you guys can ask, ping. Yep, David, you can ask a question. How long the training will be? So, usually this will be one hour to one and a half hour every day uh, based on uh, how speed we are going on that day, but it will be one hour to one and a half hour every day. And Anything else, guys? Okay, looks like no questions. So, thank you all for joining. Okay, overall training period will be around 35 to 40 hours in terms of hours. Because we have to cover so many things. So, we need 35. And then at the end of the session, uh, I mean the end of 35 hours or anything, I'll give you a case study which will be uh, close to your real application where you have to do your client side development, server side development, everything fit together, you will actually develop a uh, application which will be uh, close to the real application which we generally develop for some companies. So that will be our end goal. Uh, to use all the technologies what you will be learning. Okay, so hope uh, this uh, session will be useful, must have been useful for you guys. So thank you, bye for the day.